In this tutorial, we will create a material that will, in seconds, turn our landscapes from looking like this to this. And the reason why this looks so much more realistic is because in real life, landscapes change materials depending on slope. So if we have a sharp fall off, we won't get grass. Instead, we'll probably get a dirty or rocky cliff-like material. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in this tutorial. Important to know that this is part two in a series on how to create photorealistic landscapes. So if you haven't seen part one yet, I would highly recommend it since we go over how to hide those nasty texture repetition and we're gonna be building on top of the material we created in that tutorial. Also, if you just want the final material, you can download it right now, link in the description below for free. So with all that being said, let's create that material. Here we are back in the material and you've noticed I made some changes. The most obvious one is that I added a new material down here called Rough Rock Wall, I believe it's called on Megascans, and this will just act as my cliff texture. I've also gone ahead and added a distance blend technique to both of these materials right here. So the exact same way we did in part one. Basically, it's just a way to hide our text repetition by scaling or increasing the texture size, depending on how far away we are from the landscape. I've also added some color tints and in the material instance I went through and just darkened that grass because I found it was a bit too bright. And I added an extra multiply parameter right here to control the amount of dry grass. And you can see that this cliff material is right now plugged into my layer blend. So the actual layers of my landscape are just two right now. I have grass and I have cliff. Okay, first off, gross. My material nodes are getting way too large. I mean, look at how far below all of this is. So if I want to make any adjustments, if I want to blend all these materials together, it's going to be pretty hard. Now we can solve this by turning these materials into nodes. And I'm going to first demonstrate that with all of these materials right here. So I'm going to go all of these, select them and control X. And now I'm going to go right click here, go to materials and textures, and then go to material function. I'm going to call this MF underscore grass double click in here control V to paste in all my notes and connect it up to the result apply and now I can drag this node that we just created into my material so all those nodes that took up this entire space are now contained within this small little thing and plug that into the layer blend so I'm gonna do the exact same thing for my cliff right here. And yeah, I'd say my material is a lot more manageable right now and just a lot nicer. So material functions are just that. They're little containers that you can put a bunch of nodes in. And whenever they're highlighted with blue right here, we can double click and go into that material function. Within distance blend down here, you can see that this is a material function. So Unreal comes with a bunch of material functions by default. And we can actually go into this one by double clicking on it. And we can see what's actually happening. Don't play with any of the nodes that are by Epic Games. Like they're there for a reason. Okay, two things I forgot to mention, and that is all my parameters are now in groups. So if I click on any of these parameters, we can see that under material expression, I have group and that's at the grass. I can create a new group by just highlighting it, delete it. I'm gonna call this new group. And now if I hit apply, and the best way to see this is to actually go into my material instance right now. And since this node is actually within this material, I also have to hit apply in this material. I've already done that. And then if I go to mountain alone, go into my material instance, we can see that our material instance is organized by their groups. And if we go down here, we can see that we have a new group. So that's what I like to do on all my parameters is just give them a group. That's how I can quickly go through my material instance and find where that exact parameter is I want to change. Because with the landscape materials, 
they can get pretty complicated pretty fast. And finally, do not, and I repeat, do not forget to do this on any of your landscape materials. You want to set all your textures to sampler source shared wrap. So set them all to that. Because if you don't, and if you paint a lot of materials in one section, it just will stop compiling and Unreal will not tell you what's happening. So when I was first starting out on Unreal, I remember getting stuck on that for like half a day. And then I went through all my textures, set them to shared wrap, and then it started compiling correctly. So do not forget to do that. Okay, so now let's go over how we can actually isolate our slopes. And to do so, I'm going to use a world align blend function. And I'm going to set up a parameter for bias and sharpness. So I found a value of 30 for slope sharpness and a value of negative 12 for slope bias to be pretty good default starting numbers. So now I'm going to go plug up this function to my base color. That's how we can actually see what this is doing. So I'm going to drag out from the alpha, go into base color, hit apply. Okay, so immediately we notice our function is doing a really good job at just isolating those really sharp sloped angles. But we will also notice is that the transition between the different values are pretty splotchy. That's actually because it's taking into account the normals of my grass. So if we zoom in, we can see some grass strains. Now, if we don't want that, if we want a smooth transition, I can go back to my landscape and we can use the explicit normal output and plug that into base color, hit apply. And now we get a more traditional blend of the two values where if we zoom in, we can see that there's a slight fall off between the two and the normals are not being taken into account. So I will use this function now to drive where my grass, where my cliff is being placed. So I'm going to select all these, drag them in here, get rid of with explicit normal, and also oh, hook up my multiply base color. That'd be bad if I forgot that. And to blend them, of course, we're going to use a blend material attributes node. I'm going to hook up the grass into B, cliff into A, and with explicit normal into alpha. Now, just for test purposes, I will hook this up to grass to see if we're getting anything. Hit apply. And immediately we'll notice that it's going into effect. So all the really sharp slopes where you would normally expect there to be cliff, there's cliff. And then there's grass where there's a flatter area. So we get nice flat planes. And then we also get a good transition into rocky cliffs, which is pretty realistic. And remember, this is using with explicit normals. If we were to drag alpha in here, we would get an error that our landscape isn't compiling correctly. And I'll go over a way where we can bypass that and actually use the normals to blend the two materials together. But for now, I'm going to stick with explicit normals. And I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to call this auto and plug this one in there and plug grass back into the grass layer. Hit apply and hit shift two to go into my landscape mode, go into paint. And sometimes we don't see our new material there. That's fine. What I'm going to do is save all, go into my landscape and unapply this landscape. And then reapply the landscape material instance. So now if I go into landscape mode we can see that i get my auto material right there and our preview is showing that's working correctly so i'm just going to create a layer for this so weight blend normal hit ok and instead of going through everything and just painting everything i'm going to go right click on grass and clear that layer and then i'm going to right click on auto and go fill layer okay nice so our auto material is working right now and we also have the ability to switch between grass and cliff. So let's say if we have cliff in an area we don't want to, I can just go to grass and paint that out. Likewise, I can go to cliff and manually add in cliffs if I need to, just to better fine tune my landscape. Okay, so at this point we could pretty much call it done. If I open up my material instance, dock it right here, we have the ability to even control where that angle starts. So 
You can make that angle a lot larger, so less cliffs or more cliffs. So I'm gonna get rid of that. But there's just one issue that if we zoom in, I think it's fine right now, but what if you don't want this really soft transition between the cliffs and the grass and you want the normals of both of these textures to drive where that transition is? Well, we can go back to M underscore landscape and we can use alpha, but as we just saw, it gives us an error. So we're gonna have to do some fiddling right now to get the alpha working. We can give ourselves the ability to blend materials with an alpha by using a matte layer blend standard right there. But there's just one issue and that I wanna plug in both the explicit and the alpha. So I want the alpha to affect all the channels, but this one to only affect the normal. So I'm gonna have to edit this function. So I'm gonna double click in here. And this function might look complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. It's basically just two materials having all those channels lerp together and all of their alphas are being connected to this alpha input. You don't wanna edit engine materials. So what we're gonna do instead is copy this material and create our own, then we're gonna edit it. So I'm gonna to go to browse, find where that is, control C, go to where my materials are, control V, right click, rename, go to this my blend. Go into it. And now here I'm gonna go duplicate this alpha. I'm gonna call this alpha underscore normal and have this affect the normal map. So find where my normal is. It's right here, drag this in and switch it from alpha to alpha normal. Hit apply. Drag my new material function that I just created into landscape here. You're going away. Then drag alpha into alpha and explicit normal into alpha normal. And then I'm gonna use the same setup right here. So I'm gonna use grass at the bottom layer, cliff as the top, as the base, and then I'm gonna drag this into layer auto, compile. Okay, and we can hop back into our level and everything is looking a lot more realistic. If we go in, we can actually see that the transition isn't just a smooth fall off. It's actually using the normals. So some of the grass is blending over into the cliff. And yeah, you wouldn't just expect there to be a sharp fall off and then no grass. You'd expect there to be some grass still growing on the cliffs. So I think in this instance, it made our scene a lot more realistic. So for some scenes, I want a normal blend, but for other scenes, I don't want a normal blend. So I'm gonna give myself the option within my master landscape. So I'm gonna right click. Let's go static switch parameter. And I'm gonna call this one is normal blend. So if this is true, we're gonna use this one. If it's false, we're gonna use our traditional one. And let's move everything back. And then if we connect this up right here, go back into our scene. So now if I go into my landscape instance, scroll down, we can see that we have a Boolean that if I turn on, we can get some of that nice normal blending. And then if I turn it off, we can get the traditional fall off blending. So it's a good mix to actually see on each of your landscapes, which one would fit it better. So maybe you want the blend, maybe you don't. Right here is a good example of when you would want the normal map blend. So I'm in the Arctic scene that comes included within the downloadable content. And if you look right here, yeah, this isn't really looking too nice and we can visibly see the fall off and where the vertices are. So if I activate my use normal blend, Instantly, I mean, like automatically our landscape is looking like five times better and we can actually see some nice transitions. And even if we look at the distance, this is before, this is after, it just adds some nice variation to that transition. And right now I would say we are pretty much done now. One thing you could do, and I did do this on the actual landscape that you can download right now, is add in another blend with a third material that goes in between the cliff and the grass. So maybe like a dirt material, that's how it goes from grass to dirt and then the cliff. I think at this point I might as well show you how to do that. So here is the downloadable material and you can see I have a new world align blend and I'm calling all these parameters extra. And I have three materials 
MF underscore A is my cliff, B is my grass, and C is actually my dirt. And you can also see that I added a parameter to control whether or not I want to add that dirt into my slope buttons. So I'm not gonna go through how you do it because it's pretty much just plugging in and doing all the normal math. And if you really want to, you could just go into the material and control C all this and control V this into your own material. So go ahead and do that. And that's how you make an auto landscape material. If you got something out of this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Also stay tuned for the next video in this series where we will go over specular values and erosion, which is a pretty big deal when it comes to landscapes. Also make sure you check out my other videos and goodbye.